You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. Highlights of the news today, Monday the 28th of May. Another fallen hero in Afghanistan. Beloved parents murdered by drunken illegal immigrant. Jamaican serial rapist gets life after a spree of 15 years in Scotland. Spain considers helping Bankier out. Britain's left-wing papers denounce Greece's nationalist party, the Golden Dawn. Amidst murky rent deals, a Muslim baroness stays in flat also occupied by a man, now her special adviser. HIV Muslim American soldier gagged in court to prevent spread of disease. Muslim Brotherhood set to win first elections in Egypt. Thought for the day, gold babies and other enrichments. UK news, a British soldier has been killed in Afghanistan. Captain Stephen James Healy of the Royal Welsh 1st Battalion. Captain Healy had been mentioned in dispatches twice for outstanding leadership and was out on patrol in Helmand province when a bomb detonated, destroying the vehicle he was in. An illegal immigrant who sneaked back into Britain has been jailed for nine years for killing a couple from Leeds by driving at 100 miles per hour while drunk. Moldovan illegal Edouard Maroha sneaked back into Britain after being kicked out in 2009. The couple who were killed were named as Mr and Mrs Metcalf from Leeds. Mr Metcalf died at the scene and his wife died later at hospital. Maura tried to make a run for it, but a brave bystander went after him and held him until the police arrived. The couple's children have spoken angrily about the immigration system in Britain after this man was allowed back in, apparently receiving a work permit and also a false national insurance number in the process. A Lib Dem councillor has called for an investigation. One British National Party spokesperson commented, The Lib Dems, along with the two other main parties, could have shut the door on immigration years ago. What a slap in the face to a family who are devastated at the loss of their parents. A Jamaican immigrant, Shan Wright, was finally jailed for life last week. In 2003, a judge ordered that he be deported after serving time for dealing in cocaine. This was overturned in 2007 by a judge who said it was irrational to deport Wright even though he had had convictions then for rape and dealing. He was allowed to stay and marry and commit more sickening rapes. The offences happened in Edinburgh, West Lothian, Angus and Aberdeenshire over a 15-year period. But four victims were attacked after he was released from prison in 2003, the point at which he should have been deported. During one assault, he bit off his victim's cheeks and raped her. He is described as a violent psychopath. One World Date reporter commented that he should be chemically castrated and deported back to Jamaica immediately. Amidst yet another murky money muddle in Parliament concerning Baroness Vazi, the fact that this Muslim woman spent occasional nights in a property occupied by a Navid Khan, who incidentally is now her personal adviser, is rather odd. The property is owned by Egyptian Dr Wafik Mustafa. He is quoted as saying, I fed her and she has stabbed me in the back. He claims he has received no rent monies at all, although Vazi maintains she paid each night for her stay over a six-week period in 2008. Although allegations of oversights of rental monies have been strenuously denied by the Conservative Party, it would appear that even Muslim Conservatives are having their goings-on found out. Euronews. Using government bonds, Spain is hoping to reconsider capitalising Bankia. This is in return for shares in Bankia, which last week asked for a rescue funding of 19 billion euros. Bankia could use the sovereign paper as collateral to ask for cash from the European Central Bank, forcing the ECB to restructure the Spanish banking sector, which was affected by lending to property developers in a boom that ceased in 2008. European Union authorities are expected to sign off plans to recapitalise Bankia in June. Left-wing papers in Britain are attacking Greece's right-wing political party, the Golden Dawn. It is apparent that these papers are against any form of national pride and against any political wing that stands up for Greek nationalists. Greek Dawn has spoken up against the massive immigration which has accounted for the loss of many thousands of jobs in Greece and is destroying Greek traditional culture. It was reported on Workers' Liberty website 
that hundreds of supporters of the fascist Golden Dawn movement have tried, on the 22nd of May, to break through police lines in the Greek city of Petras and storm an abandoned factory where immigrants were sheltering. The Golden Dawn action took as a pretext the death of a local man, allegedly killed by immigrant Afghani men. An anti-fascist gathering has been called for Thursday the 24th of May in Petras. A World Date reporter commented, an anti-fascist gathering arranged by fascists. That should be good. World News. An HIV-positive Muslim-American soldier who went AWOL has been found guilty of attempting to murder American soldiers based in Texas by planting two bombs in a restaurant. NASA Jason Abdo appeared in court with his face covered by a surgical mask to stop him spitting and spreading HIV to the jury, the judge and the security guards. A unanimous verdict of guilty was brought back. The attorneys who defended him did not stand next to him when his verdict was read out in case he went into a spitting frenzy. Abdo, who was born in Texas and grew up in a Dallas suburb, became a Muslim when he was 17. He enlisted in the military in 2009, thinking that the service wouldn't conflict with his religious beliefs. He is believed to have been in contact with the influential US-born cleric Anwar al akawi who was killed in a drone strike last year. Abdo is not being tried in a military court. It has been reported that counting in the presidential elections in Egypt have so far shown that the Muslim Brotherhood with Mohamed Mirzi have claimed the first round of victory in Cairo. There is due a runoff in June on the 16th and 17th between Mirzi and former Mubarak Premier Ahmed Safiq. However, the left-wing Hamdine Sabahi has called for a postponement as he cites irregularities in the vote. A World Date reporter commented, even in Egypt, the left-wing people cause trouble with voting. Thought for the day. It's hot down here, and even I had a hard time thinking of relevant thoughts until I read through various newspapers, and had, not a rare thought for me, about the effect that all this enrichment is having on our reporting practices and reading material, to say nothing of the authorities' time and paper-filling-out policies. We have illegals all over the place raping women and young girls. We have immigrant drivers uninsured and taxed killing people in their own cars. And then we have the case of the golden babies. I suppose these poor little souls will be shoveled in the same paperwork with the importation of diseased and illegal bushmeat, illegal trafficking of animals with drugs inside them to be killed immediately when they arrive here, people likewise, and the list goes on. Put it with the ever-growing mutie killings, most of which are never reported in the press, and the creeping back into our country of leprosy and rabies, and I'm feeling thoroughly enriched already. The Golden Babies are new even to me. Apparently, Hock Kwan Chow, who is described as a Briton born in Hong Kong to Taiwanese parents, was held in Bangkok after police received a tip-off. Apparently, they do not want to be as enriched as we British are forced to be. He has six fetuses stuffed into his travel bag. He is suspected of trying to smuggle the infants from two to seven months' gestation back to Taiwan to sell. The small bodies have been roasted dry and covered in gold leaf, in readiness to sell to probably the same brain-dead Chinese who buy bear bile, rhino horn, elephant's tusks, tiger parts, and God knows what else for making them more virile. Can't they get hold of Viagra over there? I would have thought with their population problems, virility is the last thing they need. A good dose of bromide in the water might help. No, these little mites are supposed to make the buyer lucky and rich. It is thought they had undergone the ghastly Thai ritual of Kum and Thong, in which unwanted babies are surgically removed from their mothers before undergoing a ritual. Oh, rather like our abortion clinics, then. This guy isn't alone, though. In 2010, health inspectors found 2,000 fetuses on a building site by a monastery which had been illegally aborted. Can you believe it? Our Foreign and Commonwealth Office said they were ready to provide consular assistance for this creature, as he is a British national. That means he'll be brought back here and kept fed and watered for the rest of his life. I say let the ties have him, and we have quite enough enrichment for our blood already. Another evil of the web, as Chow was going to sell his six on sites advertising black magic services. I know the Chinese out of most of the Eastern races would sell their own mothers for cash, but unborns. So you might have gathered, enrichment is not for me. The odd Chinese or Indian restaurant, the odd foreign doctor who can speak very good English, the odd Polish plumber, I do not really care who or what, as long as our numbers are reduced. 
If you look around London now, you do not have to be all that bright or even pro-multicultural to spot the white face. We are the only capital in the world, even counting the US, that a white face is not taken as the norm any more. Where will it end? Now even voting is subject to the whims and vagaries of immigrant populations, and anyone with an eye can see that there are encroachments of various immigrants, even into the last bastions of British living. Small villages throughout the southeast are especially noticeable. It is taken that we have lost London and the north already, but the home counties are going as well. I'm just hoping on a local level that when the army leaves Borden they take the bloody Nepalese with them, and I mean all of the clans that have taken over Farnborough, Aldershot and are creeping southwards like a giant slitty-eyed army, taking over social housing, schools and takeaway outlets. Better still, take Joanna Lumley, put her and them on several very large planes and fly them back to Nepal. I do not care about how well they fight for England. Our colonial days are long over, and I would not want mercenaries fighting in the streets against us when the going gets even tougher. There, I've said it, and now I feel a lot better, although I'm still smoking hot, literally. We do not need another race riot this summer, along with the Olympics and the Jubilee. And finally, the extinct short-haired bumblebee has been welcomed back into Britain this week. These ones may be a little different from our extinct native short-haired variety bumblebee because you may hear them buzzing, not in English, but in Swedish. Yes, the Swedes have kindly given us about a hundred of theirs to reintroduce them back to Britain. So look forward to short-haired bumblebee honey in the near future, everybody. hunk a dunk You have been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart, very hot, very bothered, and I wish you all a very good night. <laughs>